So before we get into details, I want to talk about left or right. I have students and I've seen people that have an amazing right-handed guillotine, but almost never use it. Why is that? I'll tell you why. That's why I'm here. Guys, if you stand left leg forward, this is, you're probably going to get a chance to use your left hand guillotine a lot more than right handed. So if you stand left leg forward, whether it's for grappling, this is where you're going to use your guillotine. So if you have an amazing right handed guillotine and you stand left leg forward, you're going to have to switch. All right. So if you stand right leg forward, whether for wrestling, for grappling, or MMA, you should have a good right-handed guillotine. I have both, both of my guillotines are good, but my way left is way better because I stand left leg forward. So try to remember that. If you don't know, just kind of imagine yourself that you got to get caught in, a, in an altercation, which, which leg would you have forward? And that's the guillotine that probably should have better than the other side. We're gonna go over, guillotine can be used both defensively as well as offensively. So I use the guillotine, you know, for guard passing. I use the guillotine for uh, offensively, for snapping the head down, attacking when the guy turtles up. But I also use it defensively. If I'm, if a guy's coming in for a, for a single leg or even double leg. Uh, we're going to talk about grips. There is a big variety of grips for guillotine. I'm going to go over in detail what my grip is, but the way I do things, it's almost my, my wrist and my hand form a miniature rear naked choke. This is where I want the guy's trachea. And we're going to go over the benefit. The major benefit of that is it's very shallow, which means you could almost always get it in because you don't have, I don't have to go deep on it. Like some others, which may be stronger, like a, a high elbow guillotine, very strong. The problem is you got to go fairly deep. Um, also there's arm in versus no arm in. me personally. I prefer no arm guillotine because I control both karates, but there's a variety of other factors that come into play, play both positive and negative. One of the biggest things, and this you should take to other aspects of your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game, is the idea of control. Anytime you have a good submission attempt and you're controlling head and arm, or just the head, whether it's a triangle, whether it's an arm triangle or a guillotine, you have a significant amount of control over your opponent. We're gonna go over, even if you can't submit the guy, you know, maybe he's got a very, very good carotids or maybe he kind of read it and flops over, make sure you use that submission attempt, not just as a, as a submission, but also a form of control that allows you to improve your position. And then you need to also learn how to follow up. So if you have somebody coming in, you put a guillotine on, they flop over to the side, you wind up on top. Don't just say, oh great, I swept it. We immediately go into secondary or tertiary submissions. All right, so let's go into some of the uses of guillotine. 